Uh, my name is uh, Ian Camlet. We've had uh, three months since this broke to think about it. Uh, you guys are lucky, you can talk about it every day. We, we've got the occasional phone call to Ray Hadley, that's about our only outlet. So I've got a, a rather long question with a short punchline, so please bear with me. The club has been referred to on many occasions as a rebel club, traders, renegades, loyalty has been bandied about. But the word loyalty is a strange word because who exactly are we meant to be loyal to? What exactly is the AOL? If you look at what's happened since April the 1st, I think that uh, the uh, adage that the AOL must run the game maybe should be changed to ruin the game. This is an organisation that has effectively devalued its own competition by terminating the services of its top, ref top referees, Harrigan, Clark, Mander, Annesley, leading to a general acceptance of the current refereeing standards at the lowest level for years. The same organisation that has barred from representative football all players who have signed with Super League, even though they're not in breach of any contract, and are currently participating in their competition. It was claimed they were looking towards the future, and presumably that's why they selected Gilmeister, Hull and Gillespie. Mm. This is the organisation that has openly encouraged two current Winfield Cup representative coaches to poach players from another Winfield Club Cup, club with the express purpose of destabilising that club. <coughs> and if Gould and Fulton were going to indulge in such clandestine activities on behalf of the AOL, they should have at least relinquished their club positions. The, the actions are without precedent, not only in rugby league, but in any avenue that I've ever been associated with or heard of. It's, 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 they've completely lost any credibility. This is the organisation which has shown open bias in the scheduling of games, openly, openly favouring some clubs at the expense of others. Manly played Canberra on a Sunday when it was meant to be on a Friday night. They played us on a Monday night. Both times they, their players were given an additional rest period after representative fixtures. Yet we were forced to play on a Friday night, the night of the New Zealand-France test match. We could effectively have lost eight players, William Hallig ha Williams, Halligan, McCracken, Timu, as well as Dallas, Smith, uh, uh, Pay and even Dimmer. As it turned out, we lost five players, but that's totally unacceptable as well. This organisation has devalued its last ever test series with New Zealand by telling clubs they can release players to Australia but not to New Zealand. By saying this, they've effectively diminished the series and diminished the honour of winning a test jersey. And as with all their actions, they destroy the very thing that they are professing to protect. This is the organisation that has openly defied generally accepted rules about drug testing by allowing a player who is under a ban in England for refusing to take a drug test to play in the competition for Western suburbs, simply because the English Rugby League have signed with the Super League. Now, what message does that give to the junior players? This is an organisation that has compromised its own judiciary through the Mark Carroll fiasco. They claim the club could not side a player who's already been put on report by the referee and where it's uh, it was decided he had no case to answer. They then reversed that decision after media uproar. The player was found guilty of a high tackle, received one, month, one match suspension. Smith, Pickering and Tocco each received four weeks for less dangerous tackles. Why would we seek a compromise with such an organisation? By the year 2000, by the year 2000, the ARL competition, if it still exists, will be on par with the Metropolitan Cup. All the top ARL players, as they come off contract, will have been signed by Super League clubs, as the ARL clubs will have effectively run out of funds to enable them to continue to pay the ridiculous salaries foisted upon them by the ARL actions. Lack of sponsorship interest in what is basically a Sydney competition, the draining of profits from the league clubs, lack of international competition, lack of gate receipts, and reduced income from merchandise, and we'll see to this. The chairman of Optus Vision said two weeks ago on 2UA, 2UE, they're not going to be putting any more money into the ARL. Fans of those clubs who are with the ARL. As to why they didn't go with the Super League when they had a chance. The question is quite simple. Why should we, as a club, after what we've put up, put up with for the last three months, seek to compromise with the AOL? What are we going to get out of that?
gentleman, I think it still does deserve an answer. I think it was highly intelligent and highly accurate and absolutely genuine and honest assessment of what has happened in Lake Blue over the last three months and, and I think that man has to be totally congratulated. I'm, I'm not being biased by saying that. I think that every word he said was absolutely factual, true and honest. I think it was also answered by Gary McIntyre who said that this club does seek a compromise for the benefit of the game and we do believe that under Super League competition we will still stand alone and not have to merge but we all love not just Canterbury Banks down and the Bulldogs, we love Rugby League and we don't want to see any continued damage. Uh, there have been mistakes made by both parties, we believe more specifically by the ARL but we're not here to, to personalise that other than to say that we want to get on with Rugby League for the benefit of, of everybody providing that we can stand alone in our decision with Super League. You had a question? Hi, I'm Michael O'Donnell. Um, is it true that the Super League will have a majority share of the Canterbury Bank Football Club? And if so,